Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the abdominal ultrasound. Uh, I'll be covering the complete abdomen in this video. We, you could pare down the concepts here to apply to a dedicated ultrasound of the retroper quadrant or of just the gallbladder. All right, so this sort of study and kind of the subset studies uh, are done for many reasons. Um, and we'll kind of talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the various pathologies that could affect the abdominal organs here. Um, so as usual, in terms of the approach, you, you want to get a sense as to what's going on with the patient, what are the patient comorbidities, what is the pathology of concern. Um, it can be very useful to look at prior CT, ultrasound, any other sort of imaging that includes the abdomen. Um, and uh, just remember that differing prior ultrasound exams, renal, right quadrant, complete abdomen, et cetera, um, are gonna see some of the similar anatomy, so that can kind of be useful. Um, then you're gonna take a look ultimately at the you know, quality exam, any limitations, do we see everything well? Are there any limitations from body, body habitus or non-visualization of certain things? Um, you wanna see if there's any sort of reasons why the patient, if you're looking for a sonographic Murphy sign, would not be able to provide, you know, uh, kind of a reliable exam to that, uh, in that point. If they have received analgesia, if they have, you know, a uh, kind of an ultra level of consciousness or they've had corticosteroids, things like that. Um, and so, you know, once you get a sense of that, we're going to look at each of the organs in turn. We're going to take a look at the vascular structures and then, you know, incidental things such as like peritoneal spaces, the, you know, abdominal wall, chest, you know, chest wall. Um, and then kind of you, sometimes you will see the parts of the chest as well. Okay. So we'll just kind of go through each of the organs in turn. All right. Um, so let's bring up our exam here. Um, so every institution is going to have a different um, kind of protocol. Differing, you know, different technologies even will provide the anatomy in different sequences. So uh, I'm going to speak about, you know, the anatomy as it's provided. So this, this, you know, uh, is a complete study. We do see all the abdominal organs here, um, but I will kind of go uh, in the order of the images provided. Okay. Um, so first, you know, at our institution, it's it's not uncommon for the pancreas to be imaged first, and just we just want to get a sense to what to, to what extent we actually see the whole anatomy of the pancreas. Frequently, we don't see the tail or kind of like certain aspects, you know, more deeper in the uh, abdomen are not well imaged. And it's not common to really see pancreatic pathology, but sometimes, um, you know, if we can correlate here with the color Doppler images here, we have kind of the splenic vein and other vascular stromal posteriorly. But sometimes you can see a prominent pancreatic duct, you know, you can see pancreatic lesions, changes in echogenicity. It's going to be pretty uncommon to pick up mass lesions or contour abnormalities on ultrasound, but it's a, um, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, something that we can just, just make sure that we, you know, scan for. If you want to see this, the, uh, you know, the tail of the pancreas, sometimes a differing approach if you're scanning real time and you want to guide the tech is that you can kind of sometimes see it through the spleen um, when, when the patient, uh, you know, with the patient on their side. All right, so I'm going to take a look at the pancreas and looking for any sort of abnormal echogenicity or mass lesions. Um, uh, the abdominal ultrasound also includes images of the aorta, uh, the upper abdominal aorta and IVC. So here we have some images of the aorta. We're going to make sure there's no aneurysm, you know, look for, you can see atherosclerotic disease, plaque, things like this. Um, but typically kind of the major thing to think about, think about is, is there aneurysm? Are things patent, generally speaking? Okay. And then... Uh, when we got to the images of the liver, uh, you know, the liver will be imaged in various windows, you know, as, as it can be seen. And, and on each of these images, you want to get a sense overall of the echogenicity of the, uh, you know, uh, liver parenchyma. You're going to compare that to the, to like uh, the, the renal parenchyma uh, when we have an image that has the both of them. You want to see is the parenchyma you know, homogeneous, is it heterogeneous? You're gonna look for mass lesions, cysts, fluid collections, um, any sort of mass effect on the uh, liver vasculature as well, all right? Um, depending on the images you're provided, you can get a sense of the size of the caudate lobe. Let's see if we see that anywhere here. Um, and then also, you know, uh, surface contour, you know, you may need to be able to see subtle abnormality in terms of the hepatic, uh, you know, the, the, the liver uh, surface contour, you may need a linear probe 
to see that unless it's there's very obvious um, abnormal morphology. Um, frequent, you know, you're gonna look for intrahepatic um, biliary ductal dilatation, um, which is kind of what we'll, you'll see as additional um, kind of tubular structures adjacent to the normal vasculature, you know, and, and then on colored doppel, you will not see flow uh, in those dilated uh, bile ducts, you know, so, you know, correlating both the grayscale and um, colored doppel will be useful for that. All right. And as we go through, just make sure we're going to use that similar approach to look at the liver parenchyma and all the provided views. Um, and then eventually we're going to get to looking at the, um, the biliary system. So here we're getting some images of the CBD. Um, it, you know, it's region near the port of hepatitis is, you know, we're, we're measuring it here. And then as we, as we go, we'll see images of the gallbladder. And we're looking, you know, from normal caliber of the common bile duct, we're looking for luminal filling defects um, or for, for abnormal echoes inside. And then when we get to the gallbladder, we're going to look, you know, on each image, we're going to look at the wall. We're going to look um, for wall thickening, discontinuity, you know, in the appropriate setting like sloughing or calcification, um, abs any sort of artifacts, such as ring down artifact. Um, you're looking for, in the lumen, you're looking for abnormal echoes, which may be, you know, have to distinguish these sorts of things from artifact, but stones, layering sludge, polyps, you know, or, you know, polypoid, things that are uh, adherent to the wall, you know, rarely you'll see mass lesions, things like this. Um, you can, you know, let's see, go back, to, going back to the gallbladder. Um, you, you want to see if there's any sort of um, hyperemia on the other wall. You want to see if there's hyperemia at the adjacent uh, liver parenchyma. You're looking for pericholocystic fluid. Um, you know, and then, you know, frequently uh, you'll have to have documented separately whether or not there's a sonographic Murphy sign, you know, and, and you, when you're, again, you want to be correlating that with any knowledge of the patient having previously received analgesia or steroids or having inability uh, because of the level of consciousness to respond as you might expect to that sign, to, you know, compression of the gallbladder. I mean, and again, it has to be a very, it has to be disproportionate or, you know, isolated, um, you know, uh, kind of, you know, pain with pressure just on the gallbladder that correlated um, with, with pressure on it focally. You know, it can't just be diffuse abdominal tenderness, okay? Um, and then as we go on, we're gonna kind of get to the area where we, we image the kidneys. And so similarly for the right and left kidneys, you're going to wanna make sure that these are, you know, the abdominal organs are they're gonna be measured. So you're gonna see, you know, are they generally appropriate in size, location, does it, is it you know, normal overall contour? You're looking for dilatation of the collecting system, hydronephrosis, um, differentiation of the renal medulla and the cortex. You're looking for cysts, you know, which we'll see commonly. Uh, and then the, you know, every once in a while you'll see a mass lesion or a complex cyst. You're looking for calculi, um, which we see as, you know, twinkling artifact or, uh, you know, uh, echogenic foci. Um, and we're just going to do a quick scan of each of the kidneys or just look at each of the kidneys on the provided view and, you know, eat for each of those, uh, you know, abnormalities. All right. And, you know, and when you when you look at color doppler, you can kind of get a sense and characterize you know any any sort of abnormalities um, you know, you are, that you are seeing, making sure things are truly cystic, getting to sense if there's getting a sense if there's any regions of um, relative increase or decrease vasculature uh, in the kidneys. So we're going to do that same for the both the left and the right kidneys, okay? Um, and then eventually we're going to make our way to the spleen, of which you know it's not very common to see abnormalities, but you want to get a sense of the overall side of the spleen if there's a splenomegaly, um, look for uh, any focal lesions, um, and you know s sometimes you'll see you know it's not uncommon to have splenules and, and things adjacent. You just want to also you know, take a look at look at that and the uh, you know region around the actual spleen. Um, so that you know let's see. I think one of the things that we had kind of gone over quickly in the early part is making sure that the IVC is paid. And so here we have images. Um, of the upper abdominal IVC. So, you know, in some, it's going to be pretty uncommon to see, you know, major abnormalities there, but just to make sure that's uh, patent and, and kind of that will be imaged frequently, you know, in, in close proximity to where the uh, abdominal aorta is seen. Um, there are quite a few um, incidentally imaged areas when we take a look at the abdominal ultrasound. Um, you'll note that you there's quite a bit of anterior abdominal uh, soft tissues here, the abdominal wall, basically on every single image. When you, we image the um, liver, you're going to see the adjacent, you know, 
pleura, you'll see some lung. You just want you're, and you you want to know if there's a pleural fusion, and in rare circumstances, you're you can even see you know consolidation or mass lesions or things within the thoracic cavity that we're seeing incidentally, and just to make sure that we're getting a sense of that. Um, when we image the organs, you're going to see the surrounding fat, the peritoneum, the retroperitoneum, and just you know whether we're doing this as we're going through the study or on a dedicated look after just to make sure that we are not you know um, going by something we're catching incidentally that needs to be explained so just it's, it's kind of like a last check that i'll do on 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 each study especially if the patient has unexplained um, findings or any sort of reason to suspect that something else could be going on um, and so just to recap for the abdominal ultrasound you know a major you know the big picture, you really want to get a sense of what's happening to the patient, what is the level of clinical suspicion, and what are the, you know, certain sort of things, especially if you want to look for the sonographic Murphy sign, that would impact your ability to interpret that. Um, we're going to take a look at each of the solid organs, you know, the, the organs in the abdomen in turn, um, and, rec and, you know, understanding, you know, trying to get a sense of how limitations impact our ability to, to, to evaluate each of those structures. Um, and then eventually, you know, we are going to look also at, you know, the major vasculature, looking for patency, looking for aneurysms, things like that. And then just to make sure that we're, we're getting, a, you know, uh, cognizant of the idea that we are, we are seeing other anatomy, uh, peritoneum, retroperitoneum, the abdominal wall, uh, and portions of the, uh, the chest cavity, incidentally, on the edges of the study, and to, to, to you know, recognize uh, if there's any obvious pathology in those areas as well.